Hey everybody, welcome back to Trinity Dairy. Don't forget to like and share the video, comment. Uh, we really enjoy reading the comments and try to reply to all of them or at least give them a heart. But I do have to apologize if sometimes we miss one because sometimes they get hidden in with the other ones and we just don't see them. But uh, we always do try to reply back and try to read them all. Um, also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't put you on any kind of a mailing list or anything like that. It just really helps our channel out. The more subscribers we get, the more YouTube uh, puts the videos out there. And the same with the comments. The more comments you get, the better it is to help the channel grow. Um, we're really hoping to try to start putting out a lot more videos. We've got this beautiful weather this spring. Um, so we got a bunch of stuff going on today, some little projects. Um, I'm off of driving bus this week for spring break, so, and Justin's home, he's around today. Um, they got a day off of school today because mom is working at the, at the voting place there. She's a polling judge, so she's going to be there for the day. So what we're doing today, we are going to be starting with the feeder wagon out here has a wheel bearing in the back that's bad it's it's been bad for quite a while the dust cap is missing um, and I've shot some grease into there over time but it's starting to get loud again so we're just going to pull it off and get that replaced I did get the old gale skid steer back running yesterday that had a wheel bearing that was bad and I've been just kind of messing around with it for a while I finally got that back together and running so I'm hoping to take the put the manure forks on that. I do have a set of manure forks for that machine. And we're going to put the spreader on. Justin's going to go out and drive the spreader in that hay field where we spread all that pen pack manure. And I'm going to take the manure forks and load up some of them bigger clumps that came out and throw them in the spreader so we can respread that. A lot of little projects and kind of bouncing around, but we'll see what we get into. There might be more stuff, might wind up going a different direction depending on how things go. So anyway, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this feeder wagon out of the dry cow pasture here, get that down to the garage, and uh, get that wheel bearing going. So we'll get started with that. i got to get the bee fired up here. This one is actually the one that the bearing is shot in, which this tire is flat anyway, because I only just had the one. <laughs> this tire went flat, but it was holding up on the one because I'm not putting heavy loads in here, but you might as well get it fixed. You can definitely hear that one's bad. Yeah. But I think as long as we're doing that one, this is the one that I thought was going that's been missing the dust cap, which that one actually sounds fine, but we might as well pull that one apart anyway and... Uh, either grease it or replace it or whatever, clean it up and get a cap for it. So we'll work on that. As long as I got the little bee fired up, I think we'll get the oil changed on that today too because that needs to be done. That hasn't been done for a while. So we'll uh, get working on all that stuff. A little more. Bigger than three quarter. You want to buzz those off? Right. I'll get something to. Here, we can put them in here, then they won't get the Just Stick them in there. Right. Hold the tire with one. Right. Or your leg. Let's do the same to that front tire that pulled off. Okay, okay. All right, so we'll pull this one off first. Pull the cotter pin out. Take the axle nut off, and everything should slide off of there, hopefully. You want to see how these come apart? What? You want to see how these come apart? Oh, yeah. Let's see. 
to get this cotter pin out of here first. It's like pulling out a tooth. <laughs> Well, I'll be a dentist and a mechanic. Yeah. All right, I'll get a wrench. Yeah. They're really, really rusty bad. They really, sh they shouldn't be that tight. So they should come off pretty easy. Oh. Because you don't want to, that's why they have the pin and the cotter pin in there. Yeah. Because when you put it back together, I'll show you when we get it together, but you don't just crank these tight. Oh. You want them snug, but the bearing still has to be able to turn. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need something else too to put this stuff in so we don't get any more dirt in it than, than uh, it's already in there. Does that water cup work or not? Uh, well, I'll just keep that for that stuff. Set it on the battery charger. I guess that stuff could go on there too. Okay, now let's see how I might have to grab a hammer to tap on that. If you've got a bearing that you're trying to save, um, you should have like a rag or something down. Oh, yeah. So if they fall out, they don't just land in the dirt like that. You're not going to save that one? No, I'm going to replace it because it's been running with no cap on it. So see how these are all full of like rust pits and everything? Yeah. I mean, not that this is a very high speed thing. No. But I mean, it should still probably get changed anyhow. I actually wouldn't mind having a set of steel wheels for these feeder wagons. Oh yeah, that would be a good idea. They don't go anywhere else with them anyway. And then you got a seal in the back. I'll probably reuse that seal. Um, and then there's another bearing in here. I don't know if we can find some Amish that would make us some six-fold <laughs> steel wheels. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, we'll go pop this out and get these bearings. And then we'll call the parts store and see if they got them. All right, so now we got the seal that's in there, and the bearing is the bearing has to come out the other end. Isn't that the bearing that came out? That was the front, the outer bearing. Oh, there's different bearings. There's another inner bearing in there. But that can't come out this way. Oh. So in order to get it out, I'd like to try to save the seal. So we'll put this, I just got a big socket that fits in there with this. Uh -huh. And we should be able to tap that seal out with the bearing. Oh. Where'd the seal go? I got it. Okay. Yeah, I think we can, I think we can still use that seal. It, Looks all right. It's not perfect, but it um, just got to keep dust and dirt out of there. And like these things aren't getting a lot of mileage on them anyway. <laughs> so now, We're not taking them in now we will get the races out of there. That can be sometimes tricky depending on how these are the what? put together. Know. This part here. Oh, why did you take that out? So you've got a new one for the bearing to ride on. You have a chisel. Oh, she used an international chisel. I did to get the cap off. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. This one here, sometimes they have a little groove so you can get get in there and get a good bite on it, but this one doesn't have that. So I'm going to try to get in there without it. I think it's moving, though. See in there? So this is the back side of that race. Yeah. So that's what you want to get your chisel on and hammer down and then that'll come out of there. Sometimes they make a little groove on top of them so that your chisel can get a better bite. This one doesn't seem to have that.
go. Now, if we're lucky, there's numbers on there. Otherwise, they got to take measurements. See, so this is how... So this bearing will go into here, see? Oh, yeah. So it gives a good, smooth, clean surface for the bearing to ride on. So we'll flip it over. We'll get the rest of these out and we'll come back later when we got some parts to put back together. Ugh. Grab it from the top straight on and pull it straight up. There we go. that around a little bit you should be able to get that outer bearing out of there the whole thing is just this the thing that... if you yeah if you wiggle the hub there yep that outside bearing and there's a washer on there should wiggle out of there Are you, I mean you can't even try to pull it too much. okay so then if you get a little bit off see if you can maybe hook that washer and pull it off Got it. Yep. And then that bearing. I can't even maybe take this pliers and get in there. Try not to knock a bunch of dirt in there. Pull that hub back up. That one actually looks pretty good. We might be able to reuse that one if we keep it clean. Okay, yeah. so let's move this stuff so we don't get that full of dirt. Yep, yeah, if you can. Set that up here. Turn it, Turn it a little more. There, there we go. Okay, took out, took out the bearing, too. Yep, yeah, well, bearing stayed on there, so now. We got to uh, get that off. Get that off. Let's see here. There's a lot of dirt in there. That burns bad. Yep. All right. Um, I'm just take the seal off to the bad too. We'll clean that off and see what's going on there. They're all fell apart. Holy smokes! Can use those for slingshot though. Need a roller bearing. You watch your back, stand back, please. Oh, that's not good. There. Oh. Oh, all right, well, now we can go get some parts and see if we can get it back together. All right, so we made it back, got all our bearings, seals, everything. Um, I got the Minnesota parts washer set up here so we can wash up these hubs. Um, this this uh, Minnesota parts washer, they also make a really nice uh, drain pan too. So it's some pretty nice stuff there. But anyway, we'll get this washed up and then we can get these bearings back in. Put that Hold in it. there. One thing when you're putting these back together, it's especially important to keep everything clean. Because when you get your new bearings, you don't want dirt and sand and stuff getting in the uh, new bearings. Then when they're not sealed? Well, they just, it'll just grind them up. Huh. Gets in there and as it's turning that sand in there, so you want to keep all that out of there. All right, now I'll get a little uh, brake clean and just spray that off. Got it all pretty good. All right, so we got it all cleaned up in there. Um, like I said, I did get new seals too, so I am going to clean up on here. I got to clean this all up too, but the seal I think actually rides on this here, and that's kind of rusty, so 
I'm going to take a file to that and get that cleaned up good too so it's not all rough and getting torn at. But we'll get this all cleaned up and then we'll come back when we're packing the bearings. Alright, got everything cleaned up. Got the spindle cleaned up. Um, we're going to put this these outer races in, get them hammered in, and um, then we will uh, get the bearings greased up and get them put in. grab the old race on this one because the outer part here where the seal sits looks like it's a little bit bigger so we'll use the old race to drive that one in. I can go with that. Now we'll have to use the chisel or the punch. Got that one in. Now we'll put this one in. This is actually a Dexter. Hub. I was kind of surprised about that from Dexter Axle. I think that's why I think the seals and everything I got were all pretty much an axle kit. So might be the same as some of the trailers, the axles that they made. I think I can do the same thing here because where the cap fits in is a little bit bigger around. So I'll we'll just use the race to hammer that one in. You always want to make sure you have them with the wider end of the taper out. Then your bearings can go in from the end. All right, there's that. We'll flip it back over. The big one. And make sure that that is clean. That's pretty good. A little bit of grease there. Get the dirt out of there. Then we'll pack up a bearing. All right, now we're going to pack the bearing with grease. You want to do that before you put new bearings in because they come, these ones just come dry. Um, this is the way I do it. I know there's a few different ways. I know they make some tools you can clamp the bearing in and use a grease gun. I think I even have one of those around somewhere, but I don't know. I find just packing them by hand works the best. So I usually just take a big uh, gob of grease, <laughs> stick it in the palm of my hand and then you take the wide open end of your bearing and you just keep grabbing grease with that and packing it in there till it comes out through this top and then you keep spinning the bearing what's that the bear? grease oh this is actual bearing grease for something like this feeder wagon i don't know that you would actually need bearing grease you could just pretty much use anything but Actual bearing grease is made for higher speed bearings, but I guess if you were going to take this down the road and get clipping along a little bit faster, it'd be good to have in there. But mm -hmm. I have a tub of this anyway, so I'm going to use it. But you can see how it's coming out this side. It just packs everything in there with grease. Rubber gloves make this job a lot nicer than just doing it uh, with bare hands. But, hands. Yeah, you'd probably like to play in the grease like that, huh? No. Pack it in there. And we're all the way around. Mm -hmm. Then I usually take a little bit and just kind of coat the outside. Just to get it moving good. Yeah, just, you don't want, the less friction you have in a bearing, the better. The less steel on steel. If you can get a layer of grease between there the better all right then we'll go pop this one in all right so we got our bearing all greased up now we'll drop it into the race that we uh, put in there i always do the 
inside one first because then you can put the seal in there and then the uh, seal will hold that bearing from falling out of there. That's the seal? That's the seal there. We'll uh, put some grease on there too since my gloves are full of it anyway. <laughs> grease up the seal good. I wasn't going to get new seals for these, but they had them there and they weren't that bad a price. So I thought, well, what the heck, keep the dirt and dust and stuff out of there. You get four of them to do all? Side, no, I just did sides. two. The other bearings sound fine, so we'll leave them for now. Did you get uh, okay. two more of those, I thought? What's that, seals? Yeah. No, I just got two, one for the front wheel and one for the back. Oh. And Dad? Yep, yeah, that's from my truck. Yeah. So we'll take this, clean the hammer off so we don't knock dirt in there. There, now that bearing can't come out of there. All right, Justin's gonna give his hand at, uh, try his hand at packing this outer bearing. So, so yeah, don't wait a minute. Take a little with that hand. This one? Yep, you don't need quite as much as I had because this is a smaller bearing. There you go. Now put that in the palm of this hand. Okay. Now take the bearing and you want to take this wider end and just work it in. Just like that. Okay. Do not drop it. If you drop it, drop it on here, not on the ground. Okay. <laughs> you got to push it in pretty hard to get the grease. You don't want to get, you want to use up what you got. So you don't, otherwise if you get, if you go in here, yeah. and a bunch of this grease will just come up in the middle. Okay. Just keep grabbing little bits right off the edge. See how it's starting to come through there now? Yeah, I don't know when to turn it just like that. Once it starts coming through like that, then you turn it a little bit. Push it all the way down against your hand. You gotta push into your oh. hand so it pushes it up in there. Okay. There you go. I'm just cleaning up here a little bit of the rust off. This is where the seal goes. Um, the, where the bearing sits look good, but where the seal goes is a little rusty. So I just want to take a little of that rust off. It doesn't chew the seal up right away. Probably put a little grease on there too. All right. Now we can put this on. That went on probably easier than it should, really, but I suppose there's a little bit of wear in it. Uh, it must be on. It must be holding on there, right? Because it doesn't want to slide back off. So. Okay. Now Let's see when we get everything put together. We'll put the other bearing. On from here, try not to drop that in the sand. Push that in. Put the washer on. There we go, got that cleaned up. Now we will screw this on here. Now with these, Dad. you don't want to over tighten them because you'll wreck the bearing right away. Really? Yep. So what you want to do, just like now it moves back and forth. Just a little? Yep, you don't want that. You want it to be snug, but not tight. So what I usually do is take my wrench or pliers or whatever. So just get it as tight as you can with your fingers. And then you want to spin it and then tighten it a little bit while you're spinning it, fairly tight, and then um, spinning it by hand. That kind of preloads the bearing. And then I usually back it off like one hole. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't have any play back and forth, but it'll spin freely. Cause like when I had it tightened like way over here, yeah. um, I could turn it, but it wouldn't spin free like this. Oh. But then you want to back it off so it'll just spin freely, but it's not flopping back and forth. And then we just put our key back in there. Oh, 
that cleaned up. And you want to try to keep all the dirt and sand and stuff out of here. So we'll put that back in there. Put it in the garage. I'm going to bend that up. Here's our hammer here. Right tool for the job. Yep. No, it'll work. There we go. Now, I did get a cap for this. And I forgot to bring the cap from the front to see, make sure I got the right size. So we just kind of guessed, but it is a Dexter cap. Yeah. And it looks pretty similar, so we'll see. Is that the brand? A we cap went, that yeah. This is? Because the the bearing, the outer, the outer race of the bearing, we went a little bit bigger than that. I couldn't remember if this spot was a little bigger or not, which it was. So I think we got the right one. I'm going to get my rubber hammer to tap that. Cap is the shiniest part of the wagon. Yeah. All right. That looks like the right one. Must have made the right pick. Yeah. These things are such a pain because they barely touch them and they dent. Uh, Those caps. You just got a cap so that it wouldn't put dirt in there? Yeah, there was one on there originally, but at some point in time it came off. Isn't that the point of those? To keep the dust out? Yeah. Alright, well, we'll work on the front one now, but we don't need video of that because it's pretty much exactly the same as this. So we'll come back when we're finishing the oil change on the B. I drained the oil out of it and took the filter out so we got the right filter so we can get that put back together. All right, we'll finish up our oil change now. Got that drained, got the uh, new filter. So we'll get that stuck in. We don't need the impact for the oil filter. I, I was just holding <laughs> to put that tire back on. Suppose we could, but it might be a little excessive. <laughs> I just to put that tire back on. Like that. And then the can. Got that all cleaned out on the inside. Oh, you did? I'm gonna grab a little towel. Tricky part, I suppose, is making sure you're on that seal. Seal evenly. And put the bolt in. And all cleaned out. Holes open. You just take, oh, it screws in the hand. Just as tight as you can with your hand is how tight it needs to go? Well, yeah, I snug it up a little bit with the wrench, but you want to make sure you're centered, especially with not having that new gasket. Here. All right, so now I'll dump the oil in. Okay. And do you want to watch? I'm going to open this up, the lower one. And the lower? Uh, you want to tell me when it. I thought you had to open the higher one. The high one. Well, that's if you're. This is when you're filling it, you just want it up to the low one because it's empty now. Okay, here it comes. Okay, can you shut it? Okay. All right, we'll fire it up and see if our oil filter leaks at all and make sure the oil pressure comes up. Crank it over a little bit first to pump some oil up too. Start it.
Well, we'll be using it a little bit this afternoon. We'll get it warmed up and see if any leak springs up on there. Keep an eye on it. But, but uh, that should be pretty good. Doesn't sound too bad for an old tractor. It's firing up. So anyway, um, we're going to move on to the next thing now. We'll, um, this wagon, we got the other bearing together. The tire that was on this front one was bad anyway, so I'm getting a tire put on there. So I won't have that back probably today, but we can run it with just one wheel on the front for now. Then we feed silage later, but we'll uh, come back. I think we'll probably go out and spread out that manure. So we'll come back when we get to that. All right, we're uh, heading out with the old Gale skin steer. Got that fired up. Got the uh, manure bucket on there. Justin's gonna bring the beer out. We'll put the spreader on that. Go out and load up some of them chunks and get them spread out. He's just finishing up the last little bit. That worked pretty well. We got most of the big clumps. Um, I think taking the spike tooth over here will really finish it off nice. I know somebody had commented when I was hauling out here. They said, well, you're going to want to plow that because this manure is not going to break down enough um, before it's time to make hay out here. You're going to wind up raking a bunch of it back in <coughs> to the hay which i've done this before and i know that can happen um but what my plan is here is get it spread out good with the drags you don't have the big clumps and i think when i cut this i'm going to set the hay bind up high so i cut it a little high and i'm not going to rake it with the v rake i'll rake it with the bar rake so i can set that up a little bit um i think that'll that will allow most of it to kind of stay down in the grass. The V-rake, yeah, that'll pull everything in. Um, so we'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, I think it'll be all right. Like I said, I have I have done it before and you do wind up pulling in a little bit, which I know is not ideal. But um, if it sits out here and gets weathered and dried out, and rained on, um, you're pretty much just bringing back in some straw anyhow. I'm hoping we get rain. I'm thoughts and prayers are with all those out in Texas with all the fires and everything. That's that is terrible. Um, I don't wish that on anybody. But we were supposed to get some rain here yesterday, and um, or no, two days ago Sunday, and it pretty much missed us. We got a little sprinkle, but that was about it. So the way things are looking right now, we are really dry. Um, a lot of my water holes and swamps and stuff. The water's way down. And last spring, we had all that snow last winter. So we had a really good first crop. And I think that even helped our corn crop and stuff quite a bit. Because a lot of that moisture was in the ground because that snow melt soaked in. But we've had virtually no snow this year. So with no rain, um, I mean, a lot can change. We can still get a lot of snow yet between now and the uh, beginning of May. But, um, or rain. So that's what we're hoping and we're praying for because if, if we don't, there's I don't think there's even going to be a first crop if we don't get rain because it's I think we're that dry. But it's in God's hands, so that's what we go by. What what He gives us is what we uh, take and make the best out of. So anyway, I think we're going to wrap this up for this video. Uh, probably be trying to get another one tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I'll get out here with the drag on this because we did spread out some of these fresh clumps. I think they'll break up with the drag easier once they've dried out a couple days. But um, I am hoping to get the disc on the 1256 
and get out and see about doing some disking as long as we've got weather if the ground's not froze uh, might as well do a little dirt work so anyway thank you for watching we really appreciate it and hope you enjoy this video and we'll uh, see you in the next one